Welcome back, sports fans. It is grand final time here at the Black Crag Invitational at Friday Night Blitz Bowl. It's the grand final. We're finally here. It's come down to the Golden Hinds and Sticks and Stones for all the marbles. This is the big one, Scratch. It, and what a competition it has been. The Golden Hinds, one of your favourite teams, Sniff. Versing Sticks and Stones, one of the outstanding teams this competition. Now, I got a lot of flack last time for calling the the, the m- 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 mid Golden Hinds. Now, look, look, they're nothing fancy. They're bigger than an orc's appetite. They've got good armor. They've got good size, good movement, but they're no surprises. They're straight down the line. And how would you call Sticks and Stones? Coming into this last competition, Sniff, we've got the Mummies, we've got the Ghouls, we've got the White Blitzers, Zombies and Skeletons. These are a team with all of the tricks. And that's the thing about them. They've, they've got variety. They've got surprises. They're unique. You never know where they're going to they're gonna hit you. You might think you've got the skeleton covered, but then the mummy comes at you from behind. You just never know where they're going to come from. I'm pretty sure I know where that ghoul is going to come from. With that seven space move, he's going to be on the ball every time the ball is on the field. And Sticks and Stones, once again, coming into this competition with the first play. They are going to set up on the field. We've got the ghoul, first and foremost, in the center of the pitch. He's going to run out, I imagine, and scoop up that ball just the second that it drops. The ghoul is the fastest player out there. He has the momentum with him. Absolutely. And remember, we are playing on the finals pitch this time. There are two trapdoors and four obstacles for these teams to negotiate, as well as the other team. And this is the best of the best teams on the pitch today. The Golden Hines coming out with their... Blockers in the center, those beastmen runners at the wings, and we are going to see some knockdowns this match. I and would don't imagine, forget, Steph. because it's finals blitz bowl, there's those extra special rules that we saw come out in the semi final where we had these wacky rules where everything might change in an instant. Absolutely, extra spicy end game cards and the ability to take more than one challenge card per round is really changing up this semi this semi-final this grand Grand final final. competition and here comes what is this this looks like the white blitzer on the ball first up from the field from sticks and stones that ghoul has actually been kept in reserve he's actually running defense by the look of it for the white blitzer well the white blitzer has quite a good throwing ability so maybe getting that ghoul out and into the end zone we might see a pass from the white blitzer yeah the white blitzer has pretty good blocking as well so if the golden iron can't manage to take him out he will hit back and he will hit back hard Looks like the Golden Hind moving up the blockers, moving up the Beastman runners. Actually, it's not a bad strat- strategy scratch to get that white blitzer up there. The- Maybe a bit more variety in the game than the Ghoul. Absolutely, and the Ghoul has absolutely shown the strategy here, running defense for this white blitzer, shoving that Chaos Blocker back. Remember that the Chaos Blockers will not be knocked down unless... They have failed their armor checks, so they are going to be tough to take down. They are hard. They are harder than lead-dipped granite, those guys. <laughs> Dipped granite is pretty tough. And we have got another ball on the pitch. Looks like it's multi-ball. And that is actually knocked off. The white blitzer who had the ball himself, would you believe? So that ball has bounced off to one side and the ball out of the trapdoor bounces off to the other side, which... We have two unclaimed balls on the pitch. Absolutely insane start to this game between Sticks and Stones and the Chaos Golden Hind team. Two balls dragging on the pitch. I thought the pint and the halflings were in the last game. (laughs) We have the... Golden Hines making a tackle here, looking to get rid of this ghoul off the field, and they've done it. That ghoul has not made his save. He is off the pitch, and now we have two balls sitting there on the pitch, ready to be scooped up by the Golden Hines, and they're going to take their two points for the knockdown. 
And the Beastman runner is going to do exactly that. That's the problem with players like the Ghoul. You think that you want to get them out there and into the fray, but they're quite they're quite easy to knock off the board and go back to square one. You make a good point there, Sniff. They're both uh, they're both very offensive teams here. Um, Chaos, the Golden Hind, probably have more in the range of defense, but the Sticks and Stones in particular, they are all offense. If they don't knock you out and go straight for the end zone, they are not as resilient to the counter punch. And here come the Golden Hind. Two players, both with a ball, both close to the Sticks and Stones end zone. And here comes the White Blitzer himself. The offense king on this team has moved up, marked, and he's ready to get a knockdown. He gets to re-roll if he doesn't like, and he looks like he's gone for a crunch here. It's paid off. That Beastman player is going to have to make his save, and it looks like he does. He's going to be knocked down, lose the ball, but he's not going to be off the field. Still threatening Sticks and Stones end zone. Is it a good bounce for Sticks and Stones? It is not. It is not heading towards that Beastman. That would be a Chaos Blocker. Uh, the Beastman would be the one on the ground. <laughs> Righto. <laughs> a little bit hard to tell with all of the spikes and all of the horns from and the Chaos because players. Because they're all mid, they all look the same, they oh. run the same, Here he they goes. pass the same, but... <laughs> they touch down they the same, touch Sniff, down and that's the what same. counts. Here comes a showboat for the crowd as well. The Chaos Blocker... Really rubbing it in, getting the first touchdown of the match. And that hurts if you're the Sticks and Stones. That had hurt worse than finding your sister's only fans. <laughs> and here comes four points for the touchdown. One for the showboating for the crowd. Three for the touchdown. They're already on two. Bringing the Golden Hines to 6 nothing, And two more players in the other team's Sticks and stones still on double donut holes. What are they going to do to to retaliate? How can they pull themselves out of this? They've had some bad luck with the ghoul going down so quickly and the white blitzer not getting the injury that he wanted. Here comes the mummy to make up for it. And it looks like he is going to be frustrated in his attempt. Now the Chaos players saved there by passing their armor check. They are not going down. But ball placement is not great for either team to get around that obstacle. Looks like we're going for another try here. The White Blitzer this time does manage to take out that frustrating Beastman player in the end zone. Getting themselves on the board now with two points. It is two to six. Golden Iron still ahead. But this whole situation with where the ball is stuck right now is awkward. It's more awkward than kissing your sister. That's two sister references, one after another. It certainly is, Sniff. Well, it's a big ratty family that you've got there, so plenty of siblings to go around. Now, it looks like they are fighting over this awkwardly positioned ball, and the Chaos Golden Hinds have finally made some inroads, taking that mummy out. They're going to go They've around this obstacle, and, and they make it. Oh, oh. just... But short. close. They are going to have to use their other players to get up. They really wanted an extra play there to get that Chaos Blocker across the line. There's not much they can do. It's the end of turn. So Sticks and Stones will have their chance to block that play. And right they do. The Mummy comes straight out, makes a mark. Two out of their three moves. Here comes the final move. But it looks like the coach for the Golden Hind... Seems to be going for an extra play here. And he has gone for an automatic sidestep. He has moved that Chaos player away from the Mummy's block. And the Sticks and Stones reply in kind, making another mark so that that Chaos player cannot get the ball in the end zone. What are they going to do? Instead of sidestepping, it looks like the Chaos player is going to go straight for the tackle. He's going to miss. Frustrated once again. We're going to move up. Beastman runners instead. This seems to be a stalemate in the Sticks and Stones uh, end zone. The Golden Hinds are just trying to get in there, but they're frustratingly just coming up short. 
It's no good for the Golden Hind at the moment. They are going to try this tackle once again. The Beastman runner getting a free tackle at the end of a run. Just getting the shove in. And that white blitzer is exactly where the Chaos players do not want him to be. We have a multi-ball coming out because Chaos have not managed to get that ball in an end zone or achieve any of the challenges. And we have yet again the second ball on the field. This is... Paying up these trapdoors, Sniff. The sticks and stones are just staying put on that line. They are not letting the Golden Hinds anywhere near the end zone. And it looks like they're going to try and take out this player with the ball. What has the Golden Hind coach got up their sleeve? Looks like the ball is going to go for a bounce. They have not managed to take out the Chaos player but they have managed to dislodge that ball, which is just as good. And we have the Mummy moving up for a mark. No scores either side. It is getting... This is some tense play around that area. Sticks and Stones really need to get that ball out of their end zone. And why not try and pick up the other ball, which is just out there? It does seem a little confusing. There is a play going on here. We have moved up players. We have managed to get another two points on the board for the Golden Hind. It is hard to be defensive and offensive at the same time. Maybe the Golden Hind were playing into that end zone challenge. They did have two players in the end zone and they stopped to get that card now they and get two points on the field. Come back and scoop up that other ball. They have opportunity on opportunity, the Golden Hinds. They may not be too far ahead in the scores. It's only 8-2 at the moment, but they certainly have more and more opportunities than I can see for the Sticks and Stones. They look to be really struggling here. The Sticks and Stones haven't been playing a bad game. They, they're, they're certainly playing a defensive game, but they have to at this point. They're still four points behind, and look, it's anyone's game to play for, but unless they're defensive, unless they protect that line, I can't see the Golden Hinds just, just walking through there again. Absolutely, and just like we said, they are being frustrated again by this Chaos Blocker all the way in their end zone and refuses to take a dive. Keeps making those armor saves and keeps his feet Firmly planted on the field. It they... seems he's just going to stand his ground until he can scoop that ball back up and take it in the end zone. And he's going to go for a tackle solo here. Sticks and Stones did pick up two points for marking a lot of opposing players last turn. But they it's not enough to catch the Golden Hind. Chaos Blogger has attempted his tackle here. And he has knocked down the White Blitzer. How is this going to affect... The play next. He can sidestep from the mummy. That's going to bounce the ball. It's not going to be able to pick it up. He needs a good bounce here. And he's only gone and got it. The ball is in the end zone. You cannot ask for a better bounce than that. Being in the Golden Hind team, they are already ahead. And the Chaos Gods have divvied up a free ball in the opponent's end zone. And, and that is that a touchdown! Look at it. It's another showboat for the crowd just to rub it in. The Chaos Blockers are really MVPing this game. Sticks and Stones, even playing the defensive game, isn't working for them. It's like they're stuck in the starting blocks. One thing I did not notice earlier, Sniff, is that the Chaos team even have three players in the injury bin at the moment, but you would not know it from the scoreboard, which keeps on ticking away. Golden Hines ahead of Sticks and Stones. We are now looking at 13 points to 4 it is a widening gap here, and Sticks and Stones are really going to have to pull something out of the bag. They have swarmed all over the Sticks and Stones like a fat kid covered in maple syrup. <laughs> fat kid covered in maple syrup you'd think would be exactly where the fat kid wanted to be. But maybe there are other fat kids and they also want maple syrup. I meant like a swarm of bees <laughs> Oh, okay, a got you. covered in maple syrup. <laughs> Keep up, Scratch. The metaphors are rolling thick and fast over here along with those tackles which have just taken down yet another Beastman runner. They have four... Chaos players in the injury bin at the moment. There are only two left on the field. Sticks and Stones taking that knockdown, taking those points, 
going up to 8 to 13. And as you would expect, Golden Hines bringing some of those players out of the sin bin, they need to get in front of that mummy. They need to do something, okay? They, they, they could really shut down sticks and stones for the rest of this game if they can wrest that ball away from that mummy, I think. Now, as we've talked about before, um, this game, it's not all about the touchdowns. Sticks and stones haven't been anywhere near the opponent's end zone, but they've managed to, to get point after point after point. They're creeping up. They're on eight points just from picking up those extra bonus cards. Absolutely. Say what you will about the touchdowns, but if the Golden Hind were to pause here and rest on their laurels, Sticks and Stones could well get another eight points and just overtake them without scoring a single touchdown. Chaos team in possession right now. We have the Sticks and Stones backfield moving up, Zombie and Skeleton, and the Mummy coming in to block also. Once again, a player has run down the far end field and been blocked as they do. Sticks and Stones picking up a couple of points here, keeping the players in their end zone. As we said, now they're up to 10. They haven't gone anywhere near that end zone. No touchdowns to be seen, but 10 big points on the board. Only three points behind the Golden Hines with two touchdowns. Really, really working on these limitless challenge cards in uh, Sticks and Stones, making use of it in the semi-final special. Here we have Golden Hind looking for a long pass, looking for a long pass in the wrong direction, I would say, going from... The end zone, it looks like they're a little intimidated and stuck in that corner. They're going to try and free up the ball and get it behind them. It looks like they knew that they were going to get blocked. So to get that ball out of there, any chance of getting across the board into open territory. And that might just be the key to this game. Being in about the midway point, if they got stuck there for another two, three turns fighting over that ball... It might have been a sticky situation, but they've cleared it. Even though they haven't successfully made the pass, they will have a ball in their possession shortly. Golden Hines would be well aware that sticks and stones are creeping up. There's only a touchdown in it at this point. Absolutely, and the ghoul redeems himself for his earlier takedown on the field, and he is going to get some challenge cards taken up with that knockdown. So he is not just playing for the touchdowns and the total strategy of the game. He's playing for each one of those points that he can get his spindly little bony mitts on. Sticks and Stones are playing an absolute monster strategy game. We have a foul that sent off the Beastman player as well. Speaking of strategy there, that is a dirty, dirty play from the Sticks and Stones ghoul. Well, what would you expect from the undead? <laughs> Not a great deal more than that. And here comes another additional play from Sticks and Stones. They are really throwing everything they've got at the Golden Hines, and you can see it paying off. 12-13, only one point in it all of a sudden. And that ghoul is such a fast mover that he saw that pass out of the corner of his eye, and bam, he's off. He's trying to get to that ball before the Golden Hines get a chance to pick it up. And the Golden Hines are going to try and tackle him using a special inspired re-roll to get him out of the way. That pass was well in the clear just a moment ago, but that ghoul has crossed the field all the way to the Golden Hines end zone in order to cover that ball. Getting that ghoul pushed off... Beastman following up and the Chaos Blocker scooping it up behind. It's not the result they wanted. They really wanted that ghoul to go down. But, but at least they've got the ball out of their end zone. They're heading towards where they want to be. Absolutely. Sticks and stones putting the pressure on, it must be said. But still, we've got some intricate play for them to turn that 12 into a lead. Coming into the second half... I couldn't have told you that we were going to be 13-12 at this point, Absolutely. especially seeing Sticks and Stones have not scored a touchdown yet. Absolutely. Here comes the tackle from the ghoul once again, trying to get that ball loose. We have a Chaos player that's actually been sent to the sin bin, hasn't made his save. And that ball is loose once more with a ghoul right in front of it. If you are the Golden Hinds, you are not liking this situation. And the takedown alone means Sticks and Stones are 13-13 against the Golden Hinds. Suddenly, this has become a tied game and the ball is well and truly in the Chaos end zone. 
If you are the Golden Hines coach right now, you are calling a timeout, pulling everybody into the locker room for an inspirational speech about what's going on. Or maybe it was the Sticks and Stones coach pulling their players in for the inspirational speech. I think there's definitely been a sacrifice of an ungor in the chaos pit um, to the Dark Gods to pull this game back. And you can see the Beastman player going with the ball there. He has managed to get out, managed to take the ball, gone for a bit of a run, and we have a defender in front, another runner. Oh, they are going for a pass as well. They are The ghoul is not the only one in this game who can cover most of the field. The Golden Hines themselves trying to do it here and flubbing the pass. We've seen a lot of flubbed passes in the semi-final and grand final, haven't we, Sniff? I mean, it's Pressure not hard to do. The pressure's on. It, when you're in that situation, it doesn't take much for you to throw a, an errant pass. And it has gone wide, and Sticks and Stones will be really carefully planning out their next couple of moves here. White Blitzer moving up, taking a, out this runner. With a tied game, it's almost getting to the point where one really good play can take this out for one of the teams. Absolutely. The Beastman player goes down but stays on the field. Is that going to be an important end game result for the Golden Hinds? No scores at the moment. And we go in to the Golden Hinds reply to that play. Another Beastman runner and another scooped up ball headed, I'm guessing, even further into the sticks and stones end zone. It is such it's a tight game very, right now. Very close. It is completely drawn. Every point counts. The Golden Hines have no support up there at the moment. Needs to get some support players up there. Maybe someone to pass to. We have an end game cards come out already. That means the clock is really ticking as to the end of this game. And we have two multi balls happening right now at the end of your multi ball. Your grand final could not get any more nail biting as we go into the dying minutes of this game. There is going to be three balls on the pitch and scores are tied at 13 all. 13 all. And now there's three balls on the pitch. This is almost going to be like you're in grade school. The the pinball machines hit multi-ball. You've lost all facets of what's going on. And you're just banging both flippers at the same time and hoping you get something. Time, space and reality has all melded into one. And this game has gotten real. All of a sudden... There is a real chance for both teams here to make some serious plays. The Ghoul, fastest Snaps player up in the that game. ball and heads back towards the touchdown line. I don't blame them for doing that. If only they had an inspired play to get an extra move out of that Ghoul. It doesn't look like they've got one. And they're going to move to the other players on the field. The White Blitz are looking to get a tackle in here, causing a bit of chaos. But it looks like... It's not going to be successful. We're going to move up with some of our other periphery players here. You know that the Sticks and Stones are scraping for moves when they start moving their zombies and skeletons out onto the field. The clock is winding down and all thoughts of defense at this point are out the window. We just want to get that ball up the field and into the opponent's end zone. Absolutely. The Chaos Blocker is doing just that. The Beastman Runner going for a tackle, really, really needing it. Looks like he might get it with a push into the boundary. That White Blitzer is going to need to make his save, and that is a devastating result for Sticks and Stones. He is going to be off the pitch. In my opinion, Sticks and Stones have have lost what's made them so successful in this game. They, they got taken their eyes off the prize by the multi-ball and they stopped what was doing well for them, just earning points, getting points on the board. That's it. It all seems to be about the balls that are on the pitch at the moment. I'm not sure how closely either of the coaches is really looking at those extra points from the challenge cards here. We have... But that's One what's got Sticks up. and Stones, 13 points. And we just got another two for the Golden Hinds by the looks of it. They're going to go up to 15-13 in the dying minutes of the game. There is only a play each for each team. And here it comes. We not we knew the goal was going to get there. Touchdown! Touchdown in the dying minutes of the game. And they are one point, two points, three points ahead here. 
I can do math. How about you, Sniff? I was waiting for the <laughs> thing to tell me how many points it was. 18 to 15, the Sticks and Stones somehow have pulled ahead for possibly the first time in the game. This is in truly a tortoise seconds. and the hare situation. They have stuck to their guns. They have done... It looks like they're going to play an extra play here to get up some extra players on the field. They've defended their line. They've picked up consistent points and they've scored a touchdown when it counts with the extra bonus points and they've pulled ahead. And this could be it. The Golden Hines fans could be leaving the stadium now as we speak in the dying seconds. Not only has Sticks and Stones pulled ahead, but they've played an extra move to block all of the remaining Chaos players that are anywhere near their end zone. You can see a tackle coming here at the moment. These end game challenge cards really paying dividends to whoever can scoop them up first. And as the clock winds down, it almost seems inevitable now that Sticks and Stones have taken this one. And it has been a strong match for both teams here. The Golden Hinds really have nothing to be ashamed of, but I don't see how they're going to pull this out of the bag with Sticks and Stones still making plays here. Golden Hines not having any response and it looks like that Beastman player is going to suffer a tackle here and it looks like he may go down onto the pitch. We can see the Sticks and Stones fans are rejoicing in the crowd. There's a sea of blue scarves flying all about. There's Vuvuzelas being blown <laughs> off in the corner. Vuvuzelas. Everybody. I'm sure they're hollowed out bones from other Sticks and Stones fans being blown here. We have an inspired play from Sticks and Stones. They are going to get another play as well, as if to rub salt in the many, many wounds. They still have more players on the field. They've picked up the ball. They're running down the field. The fans are going absolutely crazy. Golden Hines pulling players out of reserve. I'm not entirely sure what that move is all about, unless it's going to be worth some points to him. I don't see how it is. Golden Hines, I really don't see what they are going to do here with this play. We have a Beastman player who has no ball going to the end zone. There must be some rhyme or reason to this sniff. Can you hoping, see what it is? Hoping for some kind of pass... Oh, it is, because the Chaos Blocker still has a ball. He has one of the three balls remaining. If he can step aside from those Sticks and Stones players and throw that ball into the end zone... In the dying seconds, in the if dying he can make seconds, this pass... They might have a complete throw um, challenge card on scratch. the pitch, which will give them one extra point. Scratch. We, in the confusion of the multi-ball, we missed that that blocker had a ball with him the whole time. This is going to be a last-minute play where it only matters if they make this completion. And it looks like the pass is good! All Sniff, of the fans! The pass is good! It's going to make it to they the basement can't in the believe end zone. It. That no! Is, that is three points for the touchdown, but it looks like there's going to be another point for a completion of a throw. That is going to tip them from 18 points to, to 19, 19 points. points. 20 points even. They are going to make a huge gain there points with 21 points on to 18 play. on the last play of the match. When all seemed lost, the Golden Hines fans were already walking out to the car park. It, it must be absolutely devastating. If the undead could shed tears, they would be shedding them right now. That is going to seal up this game. There's no other turns to be had. And Golden Hines somehow have come up with three extra points in the dying minutes, taking them to 21-18 out of nowhere. This defeat will hit the sticks and stones so hard it will turn them from undead just to plain old dead. They are going to be devastated at the moment. Second place, but a very tough competition in order to get their second place at the Black Crag Invitational, and that is nothing to be scoffed at, Sniff. And that means that your winners... The champions of the first ever Bra Black Crag Invitational are the Golden Hearts!
Hinds, or as you called them, the Mimimid Golden Hinds. They may not impress you, Sniff, but they have impressed on the pitch, and that is what matters. Taking the Golden Gavel first place from the Black Crag Invitational. And we have to give them credit for that. Well done, Golden Hinds. What a spectacular series. What a game. Absolute nail-biter. Absolutely, and thank you to the fans out there for sticking around. It has been a sensational season, and we'll see you in the next season of Friday Night Blitzball!